We need to stop meeting like this. Here we are at my desk with my sketchbook, but unfortunately it's full, so we can't draw on it today. Although some of you might find that exciting because it means we're gonna be flipping through it and you'll be able to see all of the sketches that I've made over the last couple months. This one's sketchbook number 25. I have gotten into the habit of drawing on the covers, but this time I just didn't feel like it, so I decided not to. Anyway, let's dig in and uh, check out some of the sketches. The good, the bad, the uh, pretty, I don't know. <laughs> This is me uh, pre-planning my welcome to the sketchbook page. This one went a little quicker. You can see the color scheme I chose and the very summer vibes I was feeling. This is the illustration that resulted. Usually this is the kind of thing that I would take and try to replicate on the cover in some way, but just cause the sketchbook's black and the summer vibes weren't really grooving with the black. I chose not to, but maybe that'll change. I remember it was very inspired by an old Barbie picture that I found. Then we have many a sketch kind of doodling here and there. I was trying some different poses, trying to draw more male body types. I really like that hair and that pen sketch there. These, I believe I used references for all of them. This was when I was definitely diving into drawing poses that weren't just straight up and down. And then this one, the reference was holding a purse, but I didn't draw the purse. So we end up with this wonderful itchy pits. <laughs> and then this is like one of my favorite sketches in the whole sketchbook. Not to nuke the fridge or anything. <laughs> Here's some more, I believe I used references. Someone suggested using like k-pop for references if you like drawing girls in interesting poses so i think that's what i searched up on pinterest for these you can kind of see i tried to redraw this same pose to see how different it would turn out because sometimes when you draw something for the first time and then you draw it again it looks completely different i think even this was the same thing you can kind of see the different attempts this turned out really nice i really like that these are some more Pinterest references here and there. This was me trying to take what I learned from that and apply it to a male body type. I like to do slightly contrasting body types for them. I mean, if you look at people in real life, like body types are not really that different. I mean, there are certain people that have slimmer shoulders and broader shoulders and things like that. But when I draw them, I like to try and create some contrast between the two. So you can kind of see I'm taking what I'm learning there and kind of changing it up to try and draw something different. And I really like this little thumbnail and that one as well. It turned out really nice. Here we have wheels, decks, and scoot. Some of them are with pen. And I tried to be more expressive with the poses or the faces, I should say. I really like that face of wheels. <laughs> I think this pose just turned out really well. I tried not to abandon Dex this time. Gave her a fair shot. And I tried to draw another dude. Peace. <laughs> Here I did the same thing I mentioned earlier where I drew a pose from a reference and then tried to draw it a couple more times to kind of see what I picked up on it each time. Some areas get better, some areas get worse, and you find the parts that matter to you as an artist. This was very inspired by bathing suit I had just ordered online and I was very excited about. So this is me drawing it before I actually had my hands on it on the next page. I have received said bathing suit and I'm thoroughly obsessed with it. So I drew many a sketch in my brand new bathing suit. It's got like those vintage vibes in like my brother said I look like either a concessionist or a bag of popcorn. Not a bad thing. I do not hate being compared to food. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> That's what I lived in this summer. <laughs> Moving on to this page. I've drawn wheels many times. So she's one of my original characters. And sometimes when I draw, I don't really like the way it turns out as much. Sometimes it's hard to like really pinpoint why that is. But with this sketch, I discovered what it is. I don't like having swirls in her hair. I like it better like this sketch where I didn't really draw in the swirls. I just kind of gave the illusion that there's a swirl. When I drew these two next to each other, I realized that difference. So I have yet to draw her with swirly hair and I am not regretting it. So yeah, wheels. She's wearing a mask. And then I uh, documented all of the colors I use for those three main characters. We have Wheels' colors, Scoot's colors, Dex and her dog Skid's colors. Those are all Ohulu markers, so if you have a set, you can just reference that if you ever wanted to draw them. Then I have an illustration of Scoot. I feel like her body's a little bit more mature than she should look, especially since she's wearing her like kid outfit. I feel like it pushes that fact, but I really like the way the colors turned out. And I like the contrast between the turquoise and the pink. Again, return of the bathing suit. I don't know, when you find something that you just feel like yourself in, it's hard to not draw it. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'm really happy with that pose. I tried to do some foreshortening. I don't know if it worked. I think it worked really well and I really, really like that foot. It looks like a real freaking foot. That's all I'll say. Some more characters, this time in masks. 
This was from Zen Pop Box where I drew a unicorn. So this was my first little dabble in drawing horses since I was probably like seven. I think it went really real well, which inspires like three more spreads further in the sketchbook. And I actually used washi tape as the background there. And I think that looks really, really cool. This is actually all washi tape as well. I need to do an illustration that uses a lot more washi tape because it's so fun to like cut and place. And you can get it to be the exact shape you want with an X-Acto knife. It's so cool. Uh, here's some pen sketches. I used pencil underneath, added detail with the pen on the ones that I really liked. I even threw some Copic marker on that and I even marked the numbers. I like the gradient of the blue to the purple. That's kind of pretty. Another doodle page. Sometimes I just have my sketchbook on my desk while I'm like watching YouTube or something and just let my wrist do the work. <laughs> and this is the kind of stuff it turns out. But this is uh, from something else, but like the pen sketches. I feel like that sketch is actually kind of nice back there. This is from swatching some markers. I just really like the way it looks, so I stuck it in here. This, I think I did sort of an outfit of the day. So that's what I was wearing. Nice black monochrome outfit. That one actually kind of looks like me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> These are more references from Pinterest. I somehow stumbled upon like vintage swimsuit ads. So I thought I would draw them in their ridiculous waists. They always like go in and then jet out like a triangular shape. Let me tell you that like is really fun to draw. As evident here, and they all have like very big mouths. If I was doing it digitally, I would just grab that and just shrink it a little bit. Some interesting uh, retro poses, I guess. These are some sketches from Imagination. I feel like this one reminded me a lot of Ariel. And when I thought of that, I decided to push the 80s vibe even more. And then this is another sketch from that one that I cut out and put in the other one. And uh, here we have some faces. I was basically trying to redraw the face over and over again and try to make it look like it was the same face, which is something I find very difficult. So you can see I drew like some guidelines for measurement so that I could kind of replicate it over and over again. And I tried to even draw it from a different angle. That is something I definitely need to practice, drawing faces looking upwards. We have some purple pen sketches. Again, return of the bathing suit. If it's still available, I will link it, okay? Anyway, some more summer sketches. Drew a couple of my poopshi. That's my dog. Woof. <laughs> Human over here. I think it turned out really nicely. You can kind of see the cola race pencil underneath with the pen on top. This is another Zen Pop box, and I was very inspired by that box to draw some koi and goldfish. And so you can kind of see the result of that. There's a whole video on this one, and it was so much fun. I really liked blending the colors together and creating these gradients. I remember being just like so excited to draw more after this. You know it's going well when as soon as you stop drawing, you can't wait to start drawing again. This was one of those. I just really like that yellow to hot pink color combo. And then there's the blue one down there as well. This was another one of those just had the page open doodles. I really like this plant. It must have been in a YouTube video or something. And then here was me prepping for a painting, which was another video that's featured on the channel. If you want to check that out. <laughs> what is this? Am I smiling? This looks like I must have had a reference. There's something, something a little too realistic about this pose. I like the way it's holding the phone, but I don't recall whether or not I did use a reference. You'll notice there's a lot of highlighters and pen in this sketchbook. That's kind of like what I reach for when I'm not necessarily filming. This was from the same thing that was previously taped in the sketchbook. I taped it on the back of this because there's a lot of shadowing from what I drew on the other side. So I just taped something in. Here's another page that I just, I don't know, I had just so much fun making it because it was just like all my guilty pleasures like wrapped into one. I just really really like this sketch specifically, something about it. I like the colors and the hair and the plaid. I just really like that one. <laughs> this was just a really fun page and then like adding in the color to just kind of like fill it out and get rid of some of that white space. The embroidery on her pants. Ah! What's not the look? There's a dress I really like, but its pattern is just so Christmassy that I can't really wear it all that much. So I kind of measured all of the sections so that I could maybe recreate it with a different fabric. And then I drew a character wearing it so that I could remember what it looked like, if that makes any sense to you. These are two thumbnails when I was thinking about doing that embroidery video where I used a canvas, ink, and embroidery to create an illustration. So I actually decided to film it. This is clearly not it. This is the first 
first opening segment of the Hyacinth and Sage story. So I kind of just drew and explained what happened as I went. Sadness. <laughs> it was kind of my like Inktober, I don't know, October thing. So there's a couple spreads in here of that. I don't think there's much for me to say other than maybe check out the two videos on this where I actually explain what's going on. Uh, but otherwise, some spoilers, I guess. <laughs> Here's my green spread. So we used a green highlighter and I did my same kind of mindless doodling from the imagination sort of scenario. And then on the sketches I like the best, I went over it with a green pen. Here I actually used a purple pen. I like the way that's kind of tucked in and I like these really skinny kneecaps. <laughs> yeah, there's the green spread here. Oh, this is when I finally got down to business and worked on that embroidery canvas illustration. So I kind of pre-planned it here before actually moving on to the actual canvas. Sometimes like make my spread look visually pleasing in some way, even if it means leaving some white space. I like to think of it as part of the fun, you know? I used to try to fill every corner of my sketchbook with illustrations, but now I find it just as fun to try and plan out the sketches almost. And sometimes I don't even plan it. I just sort of like can feel where I want it to go. I don't know if that makes any sense. Here's me planning out my Halloween costume. It never happened, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> These I think are some How I Met Your Mother inspired sketches. I was trying to create super lanky characters. I bumped into some artists Instagram and they had like the really lanky body types. So I wanted to dabble. This one's kind of funny. This I used a reference to try and draw a different breed of dog other than my own. You can see I used a pink highlighter and then went over with the pen. This is continuing the Hyacinth and Sage story. Again, I'll just let that video speak for itself. But you can kind of see some spoilers here and there. Ooh, spoiler. I will have it linked and you can check out this story in full if that's something that interests you. Here we have a nice pink spread of kitty cats because I very quickly realized throughout drawing this sage because the cats are kind of prevalent in that story that I don't really know how to draw cats. So here I used a bunch of references and drew some kitty cats in pen and just used highlighter to kind of point out some of them. You can kind of see if you look closely that I used a variety of shapes to kind of build out the body. So when I'm studying something new, I like to look for simple shapes inside of a much more complicated shape such as a cat. That helps me be able to build up a cat later without using a reference. It's fun to draw them from different angles and things like that. As always, I will always recommend references if you don't know how to draw something. I have a lot of videos where I learned to draw things with references and I think it applies to just about anything. Here we have, I think we were quickly approaching Halloween and I decided to draw some of my favorite candies as human beings. So we have a Reese's cup and we have Kit Kat and we have Almond Joy. This one was fun. I like that one. I like doing gradients with markers. It can be tricky, but it's so rewarding when it turns out and it just looks so cool in your sketchbook. Here we're drawing some dude faces. 10 guesses if you can figure out who this is. And I really like this sketch. With the highlighter, it turned out so well, I decided not to even go over it with pen because I wanted it to just stay exactly as it is. I feel like it did a really good job angling the hips and then angling the torso in such a way that looks realistic. So I'm very happy with that. This I used a reference for, and then here I tried to draw a dude doing the same pose to see if I kind of understood how I like to draw those differently. And I feel like it turned out really well and I really like that. This is yet another Zen Pop box, and I drew some illustrations inspired by the contents of that one. And it ended up being this sort of zombie Frankenstein's monster girl. With a color scheme I definitely don't think I would have picked by myself if I didn't go through this process or be inspired by this box. So that's a kind of cool one. This again is on like the back of a page that has markers. And then this is the same thing. Sometimes when I'm filming, I'll like skip a page if I want to film again. And then you end up with markers on double sided. So I just have to go in and fill it with some sketches afterwards. And it's really fun to throw like highlighter in there and just kind of like trace sketches and just kind of point at the ones you like. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like you created a coloring book for yourself. I like it. It's fun. This was for another video where I was designing outfits for the Hyacinth and Sage story. You kind of see those. This outfit. Oh, I like it a lot. I can see that being in like an animation, like running around. It's kind of fun. It reminds me of Kiki a little bit. Here we have a blue spread. Again, using a blue pen with a blue highlighter and you can kind of have a fun uh, break of color from the rest of the sketchbook. There's a couple hyacinths up here with their little stripy tights and her hat and a dancing lady. And then I use squares to kind of fill in the space to kind of make it look cool, I guess. 
here we come across three straight spreads where I decided to try and draw horses. This page is probably my favorite and it was the first one I did. I think it just turned out very, very well. And again, I did a mix of like the blue pen with the blue highlighter. On the next page, okay, I used blue pen. Oh my gosh. I need to go back to kindergarten, clearly. This is a purple pen with purple highlighter, but I actually have two kinds of purple highlighter. So I used a mixture of both of those. I really like this weird janky leg. I like when you can take something real and draw it in such a way where it like hints at the real thing, like a horse's leg, but very obviously does not look realistic. It's kind of what I want to continue to do with my art styles to keep pushing that. And then finally, one more spread of horses. What happened here? It's unfortunate, but pink pen and a pink highlighter for this one. I think this leg turned out really well, as evident by how much I outlined it. Turning the page. This was a prep work for another illustration, which was too big to fit in the sketchbook. But uh, this is the character I ended up drawing. These are like the art supplies I used and it didn't end up being a deer behind there, which honestly I've regretted every day since. I ended up going with bunnies, but just look at the deer. It's so much more majestic. But I do like the illustration. The girl turned out really Really cute. I was testing my markers to see which ones needed refills because I was getting very frustrated with grabbing a marker and then realizing it was dry. So I swatched all of my markers and I did buy a couple refills. We don't have to worry about that anymore. I really like this sketch. It's got like that hero pose vibe. I also really like this one with the big feet and the big ears. I appreciate the way my art looks in the end the most when I simplify the shapes and like can draw something without a whole lot of guidelines or something. So you can kind of see like this character. I didn't really draw out the shoulders. I just knew what outfit I wanted and I kind of just drew the outfit to look the way I want. I don't know, how do I say this? It's what I like the most about my art when I'm able to do that. And I don't know what that really is, but I can feel it happening when I'm doing it, so. This is when I was uh, designing a Disney princess kind of character. I ended up using a lot of green, kind of like an 1800s, 1900s sort of character who sings with her echo in a cave, essentially. There's a whole video on this one. I found a gray highlighter. I know, right? What's why even? But uh, here's some sketches I created with that. I quite like the expressiveness of it. I think because I'm drawing with something so faint, I don't feel like I can mess up because I'm like, no one is going to see it anyway, right? So it like gave me a little extra freedom that I feel like I don't normally give myself. And then this again kind of references what I was trying to talk about where I didn't necessarily draw all of the guidelines. I just knew the big shapes that I wanted. And I feel like it really shows through in that sketch. And then this one, I used pen to kind of find the details. Another box from Japan. Here's me thumbnailing the idea. I actually ended up doing an acrylic painting from these thumbnails, but it just didn't quite speak to me. So I decided to redo the whole thing in markers. And let me just say, it turned out much better. One really good thing that came out of this is I began acrylic painting on my own time. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I never want to make something that looks like this ever again. I want to improve. And so I have been practicing. Again, see, it's like the back of a page that has markers. So I kind of like to throw pen on there and do some nice guilty pleasurey doodles. I'm very happy with the big poofy hair. And I really like that face. Here I was drawing some feet. I like angled them upwards. Back in the day, I definitely would have filled this space. And maybe it looks stupid, but it gives me some kind of joy with the weird angle. I decided to draw shoes. This is the result of that. I kind of looked at two different types of shoes specifically, Converse and Doc Martens, and I designed a character to go along with them. My dog, my dog, my dog, my dog, my dog, my dog. Need I say more? <laughs> Here I threw some uh, Copic markers on top of the sketch to kind of render it a little bit. I think that's kind of stemming off of me doing a lot more acrylic painting. Moving on to the next page. This was from, I think, a scrawler box. It came with like calligraphy pens. I created these fun patterns with it. Definitely outside my comfort zone, but I enjoyed dabbling in something new. Some pen sketches. I think I had references for these but I don't really like the way any of those turned out. This is all right, I guess. It reminds me of someone, but I, I don't know who that someone is. More pen sketches. I like to exaggerate the kind of like torso shapes and practice those and kind of figure out what's the quickest way to do that. I like to churn out art sometimes more than I actually enjoy drawing it. Sometimes I have to take a step back and realize, whoa, 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 what are you doing there? And then it starts getting fun again. 
This is with a cool erase pencil, I believe, and I was drawing something. Don't remember what it was, even though I think it was very recently. But I do like these colors. It makes me think of Willy Wonka or like the Hulk or something. Here, trying to draw like faces again, because they're my favorite. I really need to start practicing drawing them in different angles though. As you can see, I only draw like straight on left or right. And I need to start like expanding that vocabulary. But either way, I still like drawing faces. Improvement is just there if I ever feel like it. This was really fun because it was like diving into something I definitely know nothing about, which is like more sci-fi art. The illustration ended up using a lot of marker, which if you want to check out that video, you can see it. But here I was thumbnailing the ideas for the larger illustration. It's weird. I've played like a lot of Star Wars video games in my day, but let me just say none of that made an imprint in my brain. So it was very difficult. Here's kind of what I came up with. This is the kind of thing that I would like on a t-shirt. Do you remember there was like a time where Disney was selling merch with like sketchy versions of like the princesses? So you could see like a colored sketch and then it had like line art in some of the areas. That's what this reminds me of. And I feel like it would look really cool on a t-shirt or something. Yeah, I really like these pen sketches. I think they turned out very, very cute. And of course, this one. I really like swoopy hair. Swoops for days. And I think this is my favorite spread in the whole sketchbook, which is good because it's the last one. <laughs> I use references of birds and kind of using what I've learned doing acrylic painting over the last couple weeks. I uh, recreated these birds with markers this time. Not that I've drawn birds with the acrylic paints. What I mean is I've been using paints to recreate references. And so I took that knowledge to recreate birds. And then this is my bird from memory. So clearly I didn't learn that much. <laughs> I don't know which one my favorite is. I think I like the robin because it has the most rendering, but I also really like this one because it's yellow. I feel like I've already had this discussion. Am I having deja vu? <laughs> I'm kind of inclined to say this one just because it's yellow. But I also kind of like the texture of this and the texture of this. I don't know. And I really like the face of the blue jay. Is that a robin or just a bluebird? I don't even know. Do I look like a birdologist to you? <laughs> but I'm very, very happy with this spread. I feel like it just gets me excited to draw more. Kind of like the koi one. And then finally we come to the last page, which ends up being one of those kind of mindless doodle dump pages. We also have uh, some illustrations I made with Posca pens. I really like these. Again, it has like the big chunky shapes that I really want to start incorporating incorporating more into my art. Not maybe this simplified, but just the chunkies. I really like them. And hey, I like that. That's cool. I forgot I made that. <laughs> I really enjoy drawing characters like in more scrunched up poses, which I want to continue to do in the future. Hey, was this the sketchbook that I, did I skip a page? Or was that like longer ago than I thought? I did a video where I like literally only drew scrunchy poses. I thought it was the sketchbook, but it clearly is not. Now the fun thing about yellow sketchbooks, they have a little pocket in the back, so you can like stick little loose leaf sketches that you have. So you can like throw little sketches that you found in your room in there. Oh, there it is. It's from that thumbnail we saw earlier and some of the sketches I did with that. Oh, it was like the one marker, two marker, three marker challenge that I made up and I don't know if it was really that great of an idea, but it was interesting. <laughs> uh, some more sketches. I really like this one. I feel like she looks like she could beat you up. <laughs> Does that make sense? Some more kitty cats and looks like a Pokemon trainer of some kind. Oh, this I was trying to draw with my left hand. Beautiful. We love it. This one I started with my left hand and then finished with my right hand. Uh, these are from Zen Pop boxes. <gasps> oh! So we have Dex and Skid wheels. Again, you can kind of see I didn't draw in the swirls. I kept them more chunky shapes. And then we have Scoot, three girls. My favorite part about them is like their color scheme. So specifically when I was creating them, I used a migrating color scheme. They each have a color that they share with one of the other two, but they're a different color. So like pink and pink, yellow and yellow. And if we put that one in the middle, we go yellow, yellow, turquoise and turquoise. So they each like share a color and I feel like it just makes for a cute like trio, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Alas, that is the entire sketchbook. I feel like I just started that, but I started it back in July, so it's not even like that recent. But what happened to 2020? Did it even happen? Are we all just in some kind of nightmare? Wake me up! I'm always curious to know how many of you were around when I started this sketchbook. Have we gone on this journey together? Let me know if you're excited to see my next sketchbook, which you might have already seen bits of, because sometimes I like to be mysterious and not tell you I'm in a new sketchbook, but it's like kind of obvious because I'm like all of a sudden here instead of 
link in the back, but whatever. Sometimes I think I'm being cheeky. Also, if you're interested, I have archived my entire collection of sketchbooks up until this one, which is my 25th sketchbook on my channel. I will have a link to the playlist. I think they start when I was like 14 years old and you can kind of see my art style evolve. It's that's something that tickles your fancy. Either way, I wanna thank you guys for watching and coming along with me as I did a small sketchbook tour. Thank you for all the support and I wish you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!